So, I thought it'd be interesting to compare the HP build with dual 3.5 inch drives to a proper Synology NAS. And I just happened to get my hands on a Synology DS216. And it's an older unit, I believe. But it still works and seems to be able to run the latest software. So, that's kind of nice. But uh, yeah, I was just kind of curious to see what power utilization would be like with the Synology versus the HP. So I got the numbers in, and uh, the results were surprising. They weren't what I was expecting. Um, so with the HP, idle power was 16.7 watts, and average draw doing gigabit file transfers was 29 watts. And with the Synology, idle power was 15 watts, and average draw was 19.5 watts. I think with both of these you could get idle power down further if you put the drives to sleep and let them spin down. But overall idle power draw between the HP and the Synology was pretty darn close. And odds are it's because both of them had the drives spun up. I think once the drives were spun down you'd see a bigger difference between the two. Uh, gigabit transfers though, that's where the big difference was, and I'm honestly not sure why. It might be because the uh, HP has the NVMe drive for write caching, or maybe um, the system's faster processor and more memory is what's uh, increasing that draw. But yeah, an average draw of 29 watts from the HP and then 19.5 from the Synology. Basically, the HP is drawing 10 more watts than the Synology is under load. A uh, big difference, though, is, at least with these two, is the HP should be more capable than the Synology, as it could run VMs and stuff. This uh, HP build is configured with an i5, which it's a low-power i5, so it's still a dual-core, but a little bit faster, a little bit more um, turbo capabilities there. But uh, yeah, that uh, really kind of surprised me. So another interesting point between these two builds is price. So the HP with boot drive only would cost you 136 to build. And the Synology, you're looking around 100 to 150 buying that used. And the thing is, with these two, nearly everything about this HP is replaceable. But when it comes to Synology, uh, most you're going to be able to replace the caddies and you're going to be able to replace the fan and also going to be able to replace power supply. Ironically, I don't have the original power supply for this, so when I sell it, it's going to come with a Netgear power supply. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is unfortunately not very repairable. Um, so. Honestly, even with the power savings, I would almost be tempted to go HP over the Synology unless you just have a really high power cost. But also, you can't really upgrade this one. Some of the newer models, you can upgrade the memory. They have a single DIMM slot for DDR3. But according to the web interface, this one only has 512 megabytes of RAM, which is shockingly low, but it can push gigabit file transfers, so... You know, I guess not that big of a deal. But yeah, overall, um, if you're willing to do the work yourself and you're willing to learn how to use TrueNAS scale, the HP still seems to be the best way to go, in my opinion. I mean, what's 10 watts difference when it comes to active use, unless you're going to hit this thing 100% of the time. So, I don't know. Hopefully that was interesting, and thanks for watching.